Hi there. I'm in Indianapolis today at the uh, Luminous Landscape offices, and I'd like to talk to you about this baby. This is the Sony 12 to 24 FE G lens. Now, this is not a G Master lens like a lot of the lenses that have come out, but uh, a few months ago, Sony invited us to Santa Barbara, a number of my colleagues and myself, to show us off two new lenses, the 16 to 35 G Master lens and the 12 to 24 G lens. The G lens was recently released and as always, I like to purchase the lens and do a review with an actual model. And this is what this is all about. There's a lot of content in the article and review below, uh, which I hope you take a look at. There's some zoomable pictures where you can zoom in and see images at 100%. Um, but let's uh, talk a little bit about this and then I'll come back to to the article itself. This is one incredible lens. It is so light, it's hard to believe. This lens weighs just 19.7 ounces. Goes for the price of $16.98. It was a surprise to all of us when it was announced, uh, mainly because we were expecting more G Master glass and they sprung this 12 to 24 on us. Uh, for myself, when Canon released their 11 to 24 lens, uh, I was really, really liking that lens. Uh, it's a beautiful lens. I've seen a lot of my friends use it. I've had a chance to use it once or twice. And uh, there's something about ultra wide, which I show in some of the illustrations below in the article. Uh, but this is one beautiful lens. First off, I don't know how they made it feel so light. It has uh, weather resistance, so it's uh, resistant to moisture and uh, dust, but it's not like waterproof and dust proof and so forth. And uh, here I am with it out of my camera. So let me put it back on here real quick. Um, but let me talk quickly about it. Um, this is uh, easy uh, zoom ring here to do your zooming. There's an AF autofocus manual focus switch and a focus hold button. Uh, this focus hold button is really nice because if you're doing uh, some uh, work and you want to hold the focus, you just kind of use your thumb right here and hold the focus and shoot the picture. Now this button can also be customized so you can use it for depth of field or any number of different assignments if you want to use it. The lens hood is built in, okay, and it's got a gigantic lens cap that uh, snaps on here and then comes off and there's two releases to bring it off. So the first thing you'll notice is the fact that there's no filter holder. Um, that's kind of a, a shame, meaning you can't screw filters into something like that. It's because it's got a big bubble lens. It's very uh, uh, bubbly out front in the sense it's a very curved front glass. And the lens shade is basically there to uh, protect it and it's built in so that you can't take it off and uh, scratch it. I mean, you can put the camera down like this and you'd be okay. Um, so there are a couple companies that will be building lens filter holders for this. Uh, Nisi is one of them and Wine Country uh, Filters is another and they're going to be building these for wide angle lenses and there'll be a device that slips over the front of the lens, clamps on, and then you can drop in your gradated filters and or polarizer or uh, neutral density filters. So if you're going to be using this lens for that kind of work, it's fine. I don't remember the last time I did uh, uh, something with the ultra wide lens where I needed that, but uh, now that it's going to be available, I'll certainly use it. Um, I use the Wine Country filter system, so you'll see uh, that review previously on the web. So let's go uh, over some of the details on this lens. It's got 122 degrees view of field. It's classified as an ultra-wide lens, and uh, it's uh, just uh, very, very nice to work with. It's got 17 elements and built into 13 groups. There's an illustration below and the article if you're interested in that, as well as the MTF charts. Uh, for this lens, which are very impressive if you're into uh, MTF charts. Frankly, I like to shoot with a lens and make my determination uh, based upon my shooting experience, which you're going to see a lot of the images below uh, for that. Uh, the price is $1,698 and comparable to uh, the Canon lens, uh, which they have an 11 by 24 f4L lens. That comes in around $2,799, very expensive. It's also very heavy. It's a 41.6 ounce lens. Now compare that to the 19 ounce here. This is half the weight, uh, more than half the weight of the competing lens in the Canon lineup. And Nikon also has a 14 to 24, which is very similar to this. It's an F4. Uh, it weighs in at 35 ounces, so once again, you're talking about something that's almost twice as, as heavy. 
uh, and uh, it sells for around um, $1,897. Uh, and you can probably get a special on it uh, if you're looking at this uh, in July. So bottom line is I've had a lot of fun with this lens. It opens up a whole new field of photography as far as the angle of view goes. Uh, I explained below in the article that it's kind of a tricky lens. If you uh, work on the axis above or below normal horizontal, you're going to introduce uh, a new kind of field of distortion, a lot of which can be corrected sometimes in Lightroom or Capture One as far as uh, their perspective control goes. Uh, but if you're a creative photographer, you'll learn how to use this lens um, in regards to adding new fields of composition. It tends to bring the sky in, especially if you have clouds and any kind of foreground, it kind of just like sweeps you into the scene. Uh, and you'll see some examples of that uh, also below. Bottom line is, my experience with this lens has been great. I really like it. I can't wait to get the 16 to 35, which is the next lens coming out, and the 100 to 400 millimeter lens, uh, both G Masters, which I'll be doing a review on after I get them. So uh, we expect to see those in early August, at which time I'll start shooting immediately so that I can do a report on it. If you're into the uh, Sony uh, E-mount camera system, and you should be because there's some interesting uh, things coming, I, you don't think they're making this G Master glass uh, with all this resolution that the glass can offer. Uh, without some kind of camera coming in the future that can handle that. So once again, that's purely speculative on my part, but I think we're going to see some pretty interesting things from Sony in the next several months. Meanwhile, this won't hurt to put it in your bag. So I have now the 12 to 24, I'll have the 16 to 35, 24 to 70. I've got the 85, the 70 to 200, the 100 to 400, and I'll get the extenders for the uh, 100 to 200, uh, 100 to 400, as well as the 70 to 200. 1.4 and 2x. Um, that makes for a very nice uh, zoom lens kit. I also have a number of primes uh, which I keep in my bag and uh, we'll talk more about the primes some other time. Just a note on that, one of the things that you should be aware of now is that the battle between primes and zooms is a lot less narrow than it used to be. Uh, these lenses are so good these days as far as zoom lenses go uh, that the investment in a zoom lens in regards of only having to have four lenses in a kit that give you a very wide range of field. So with four lenses, I can cover everything from 12 to 400 millimeters in the field of coverage. Um, and know that I've got a sharp lens to do it. That works really, really well. So uh, as much as I like shooting with primes, that's just a lot more glass you have to haul around, especially when you're in the field. And uh, as you can probably tell by the gray beard, I'm getting up there in the years. Um, so hauling things around in the field isn't as easy as it used to be. So I'm into the zooms these days and I feel very good about the zooms that I have, specifically the uh, Sony zooms and the G Masters. So that's about all I have. Read all the information below in the article. It's uh, got a lot of images that you can look at. I did a comparative uh, uh, test against my uh, bookcase, my famous bookcase at home, at 12 millimeter setting and 24 millimeter setting at various f-stops if you'd like to look at those. Uh, plus, there's a lot of other examples of uh, the lens and how it works. So, appreciate you stopping by. Appreciate you taking the time to read the extended review and article below. And I'll see you on the luminous landscape.